Hey, Cam Garrett, how are you? Hey, good morning. Hey, man, I know you guys came in from that 39-hour trip this morning. You guys had a monster pile of fish back there, huh? Yeah, we put a nice catch together. We had a good crowd. Uh, the mangrove fishing was a little tricky through the night on the new moon, which is typical. Uh, they're, uh, they're more of a full moon, and uh, we, uh, we get them during the day on the new moons. But uh, we were hunting the red snapper through the day. We had 50 people on board, and, and we got a, a very near limit, just a few fish shy. And, uh, and a nice pile, pile of gags. Yeah, well. man. Those gags, it, there was a lot of gag grouper in that pile this morning. You guys killed them, huh? The gag, yeah, the gags seem to be steady. It's, uh, it's hit or miss from trip to trip, and it, and it really boils down to just a few, few things. Um, and it's just whether or not the, 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 the lines going down are tackled right and drags are set appropriately. Um, it either seems like we're losing a bunch of fish or we're getting them to the boat. Yeah. And, uh, and this trip, the guys had it figured out, and they had their drag set right, and they got the fish to the boat. Yeah, I mean, gag grouper fishing, you only have a couple seconds, so you've really got to make it count. So having that right tackle, what do you mean by right tackle? What would you recommend? I prefer, with what we're doing, I wouldn't fire down anything less than eight. But you start scaling up into that 100, 120, which I would really like to use, it seems like you you don't get the bite because majority of the boats dropping down 60 to 80 and um, I like using the 80 just for that little extra cushion on those in case you get those big 30 40 pound fish on the line but if everybody was using the 100 or 120 don't do you feel that the bite would be as consistent uh, yeah if everyone's using the same line class then typically the fish are gonna chew yeah and it just depends on who drops down that light stuff and then if they're able to bring the fish up or break off, huh? Yeah, and a lot of times on each spot, it's the first couple lines down. Not that you want to be hurrying up, racing to drop your line down before the anchor's set or anything, but it seems those first couple big baits that get to the bottom get the bite first. Yeah, those big aggressive gags waiting for those fish to bite. And now I know uh, when I've gone fishing with you, a lot of times you'll use a vertical jig and you'll fire that down right away. And, and that kind of your tactic, is that what you're trying to accomplish is be that first one down there? With a vertical jig? Yeah. Yeah, that can be effective. And uh, and a nice thing with that too is you can cast pretty far away from the boat and get into different areas of yeah. the spot. So uh, whether it's a vertical jig, big live bait, big dead bait, that first one down, ready, set up with the right tackle, the right drag is gonna be a good opportunity to get a big gag, huh? I'd say. And as far as the drag's concerned, you don't want it loose, but you don't want it locked down either. And what I always tell everybody is if you take your hand and wrap it around your line and pull on it, it should leave indentations across your hand. And it should stream out a little bit because, you know, sometimes these fish are 30, 40 pounds and 80 pound test, people think, well, that should stop it. It doesn't. Yeah. Uh, it will part, especially if they get near a rock or something like that. So. You want to be able to peel just a little bit uh, in order to um, get that first burst out of the way. But then after he gets that first burst out of the way, you got to start lifting on that rod and, and get him up and, and get some turns and, and, and get him headed up in the right direction. Yeah, and this guy is rocking out. Look at this guy. All by himself on the boat. One dude. <laughs> <laughs> having a good time but yeah like what you were saying essentially is making sure that you have the drag almost locked down uh, but not all the way and that's what the I think is a common misconception among people is when you're gag fishing everybody talks about locked down drags but you don't really necessarily want it locked down all the way is what you're saying and I don't if I yes. was if I had a 120 pound test on a reel and a leader yes but when I'm fishing 80 80 I like there to be a little bit of a of a cushion where they can maybe make a little burst and peel off a little bit another big mistake i see people make is they'll hook that fish and it'll start just doubling their rod over and then they'll go lock it down when the fish is wanting to make a run and it pops them off every single time yeah it's just too much tension and uh it, it either pulls the hooks or the line parts yeah so having that little bit of a cushion for that for that fish to just just peel a little bit of drag I think goes a long way <laughs> you want to go fishing <laughs> that's a 40 pounder right there a 40 pounder for sure that's Garrett's son Rhett 
Now, uh, as far as uh, the other fish, uh, you've been seeing a lot of pelagics and stuff out there too, right? We had a lot of grass out in the grounds in the in the first part of this red snapper season, a ton. And um, we were seeing mahis. We had a couple wahoos. Kingfish have been steady through the night if you're fishing for them. Um, the grass was tricky for the troll. I feel like we could have caught a lot more wahoo if we were able to maybe run up and down the side of the grass lines. But unfortunately, that's you know we're bottom fishing, so we're headed to our spots and we were running through it a lot. So I think there were a lot of missed opportunities there. But we did see a lot of mahis and uh, kingfish, um, tunas. But uh, that grass has left us. Yeah, I did not see it on this last trip, which might be a good thing for the trolling. Yeah, um, we, we only made one long run on this last trip where we had an opportunity to troll. Uh, it, it was uh, it was not productive, but um, this time of year is uh, it's uh, it's anybody's game, you know. Yeah, and, I know Sal this week caught a or hooked a sailfish and jumped it in nice. only sixty five feet of water. So it's definitely a good time of year for those pelagics. Uh, any other parting tips or tricks for these guys and gals coming out fishing? Um, just. Uh, you know, just make sure you're tackled appropriately. And um, for you first timers or guys who haven't done it in a while, watch the people who appear that have done it in a while. If you yeah. see guys catching fish or you see guys, you know, we have a regulars club and you notice they might be in a regulars club and they're doing something that you're not, then, you know, make an attempt and, and try to change and try to, you know, do, use the different tactics and uh, watch what the people are doing that are catching the fish. And that's something that uh, I really feel is special about party boat fishing. I mean, you, you just like myself, growing up on these boats and growing up party boat fishing, uh, it's kind of that uh, almost a benefit to us because we got to learn from all those people that fish with us and fish on these boats. And you just pick up so much if you're willing to listen. And everybody's got their own technique and their own style and their own rod and reel and line class and so on and so forth. And you can really gain a lot of knowledge by just looking up and down the rail and watching what the guys that are catching fish, watching what they're doing. And that's important. You got to watch the guys who are yeah. catching them. <laughs> and then you got to you got to kind of come out of your comfort zone and what you know and try. It. Yeah. You know, you, you can't just stick with what you know and maybe you're not catching anything and stay with it. Try try something different. You know, whether yeah. it's the length of your leader or the the, the size of your hooks or whether you're trying to jerk to set the hook or reel to set the hook just there's a there's a lot of different preferences and and everybody does it differently but watch the guys that are catching the fish cool man well i appreciate your time i'll let you get back to your son before he climbs off the side of this thing Here he goes. Here he goes, right. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> see you later guys